Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to do hot process soap again. This will be my second video doing hot process and I love doing this. I was really nervous the first time I brought you along and uh, you saw my first attempt and it turned out great. And uh, so anyway, I want to do it again. And one of the reasons why I like hot process is for the what I'm thinking just chemically for the essential oils when I add them after the cook, I feel like more of the properties of the essential oil will remain in the soap. So it's just my theory, it's a hypothesis, I have no proof, but anyway, as my thinking is, you're not overheating those essential oils as it goes through saponification. With hot process, you're hitting saponification first, then you're adding them later. So the essential oils that I'll be using, this is gonna be an all natural soap, is a thieve type essential oil blend and that's a trademark thing um, so just a type which consists of a blend of clove lemon cinnamon eucalyptus and rosemary essential oils just a blend now I will share the recipe in the description box below I'm not going to share uh, the essential oil blend and properties I want you to do research and find out what essential oils you're using each one has a different usage rate um, for the volume of soap or product that you're making uh, and I don't know what brands or what combo you're doing so I'm gonna let you just I'll give you the volume of the soap and then you can find out what your volume of essential oil or fragrant oil that you want to use in there. I think if you're a soap maker and you're working with lye products, uh, sodium hydroxide and things, you kind of need to know what you're doing. So, See, I, And for the colorant, I'm going to do a swirl. My goal is to keep this fluid enough to do a swirl. And I have this Australian Red Reef Clay. And I will try to find the link for this. I bought this quite a while ago and it is hard to find. So um, I will attempt to find you a good link for the Australian red reef clay which has wonderful skin benefits it's really high in minerals and it's it creates like a glowy um, you know on your skin it's just really good and it's gorgeous color so that's going to be going in there for my color swirl uh, that I'm going to attempt if I can keep it fluid the last time I did this it was great I was so impressed and um, I think hot process has a lot of potential for me I'm loving it um, I did say on my last video, which I'm revising, is that uh, you can use it quicker. Well, you can because it goes through saponification, so it's ready to use, you know, a day or two out of the mold. The pH is great. It's totally mild, but it still has a lot of fluid in there that needs to evaporate out. So for a nice hard bar of soap, typically you're going to want to let this cure four to six weeks like you would a cold, pro a cold process, but it's safe to use right away. Um, so that being said, I did end up curing mine four weeks before I wrapped it up and, you know, it was ready to go and it made a great bar of soap, good and hard. So this soap I will cure for a full four to six weeks before I market it or use it myself. Um, but I will bring you along and do a lather test before that because the saponification's already happened. The pH is great and it's ready to go out of the starting gates. So with all that being said, I'm going to grab my crock pot and get all my ingredients prepped and ready to go. And let's make uh, my second attempt at hot process soap. All right, I'm ready to get going on hot process soap. And this is the third time I've made this. The first time I made a uh, video and I will link it uh, maybe up in the corner or down in the description box. My first hot, first hot process. Um, which is very similar to what I'm doing today. I loved it so much, I wanted to do it again. But one of the limits of hot process is the capacity of a crock pot for me. So I'm going to do two crock pots and hopefully have enough to go in one of my big, um, tall, skinny molds from Workshop Heritage. So anyway, let me tell you what I've got going on here right now. I have these both turned on high just to melt my oils. And I will have this the full recipe written in the description box below, but I'll tell you what I've got here. Also, I have in each one of these, so I'll just tell you one. I have 12 ounces of coconut oil, six ounces of organic sustainable palm, four ounces of cocoa butter, two ounces of shea butter, six ounces of castor oil, and 30 ounces of olive oil. And that's in one and then duplicate it over here. They're exactly the same. Uh, and then I've got my, um, the different, something I'm gonna do different this time is for my lye solution, I'm gonna use a combination of distilled water and aloe vera juice, a 50-50 split. Uh, so I'm doing 22 ounces of 
aloe vera water, so 11 water, 11 aloe, uh, and to my lye solution, which is off to the side cooling a little bit while my oils melt. Um, to that, before I added the lye crystals, I did put in cane sugar um, at a rate of, let's see, I put in one tablespoon of cane sugar in each lye pot and also four teaspoons of sodium lactate in each lye pot. After the lye was uh, mixed in and dissolved, I added the sodium lactate. Um, and I did have tussa silk fibers to each one too. So uh, that's what's going on with my aloe vera lye solution. I got the oils here, just gonna melt down um, and we'll come on for our next step. But what the plan is, uh, is one of these crock pots, I will use my Australian Red Reef Clay to color. The other one will be uncolored and hopefully I will have a fluid enough batter to do a swirl. Um, and when we get to that stage, when it's all done cooking and uh, we're done with the saponification, I'm gonna super fat with some hemp oil. I'm gonna put one ounce of hemp oil in each of these for a super fat and three tablespoons of yogurt in each of these um, to help keep it fluid and it's got wonderful skin benefits. So we'll do that at the end to help keep it fluid for the swirl and all of that. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna let my oils get melted here and finish getting all my other things ready. And the screen is kind of full here. I'm hoping I can, you know, have a good view for all of you. But I'll come back when the oils are melted and we're ready for the next step. So all of the oils are melted in each of these and um, I turned them down to low. And here are my aloe vera lye solutions for each one. Um, and let me just show you what I've got back here, which you can't see off camera. I have my yogurt and my hemp oil. And I just have them kind of cozied up around the crock pots to keep them nice and warm. Because one of the keys to having a fluid hot process soap is um, to have everything warm when it's time to pour. So I'm just adding my lye solution in and I'll blend it into each of these. Uh, if everything is warm, including like uh, if you can give your silicone mold a zap in the microwave or have it in the oven on like, you know, 170 or 150 just to have everything warm, it will help keep your um, hot process batter fluid longer uh, so you can get a swirl and get it a little more pourable. So that's why I have all these little jars cozied up around my crock pots here, just getting the radiant heat. So I'm gonna stick blend these and get them up to a nice trace. So, all right, the point is you don't need a super thick trace. This isn't a very thin trace. You just wanna make sure you have emulsification. Um, I'm gonna blend these a little longer for a nice sort of medium trace and then pop the lids on and let these sit for, you know, I'll let you know how long, but it's gonna to start to cook and fold over and I'll show you as that happens. So I'm just gonna get these to a little bit thicker trace before I throw the lids on. All right, I, uh, <laughs> it's been about a half an hour, maybe 35 minutes, um, and I don't know if you can see through the condensation, but it's starting to cook around the edges and kind of fold in. Uh, my crock pot lids have these little vents, so I've just put some soap rags over the vents just to keep all the moisture in because I don't want it to dry out. But um, I'm almost ready to get in here and start stirring. I think I'll give it another five or 10 minutes and then we'll come in and give it our first stir and see how it's looking from there. All right, I'm ready to pull these lids off here and uh, give these a stir and see what we've got going on. So it's kind of folding in like this, which is great. It's getting opaque. That's everything we want it to do, it's doing. So this is very encouraging. I'll just get in here and give it a stir. I want it all to cook you know, evenly because of course crock pots heat up around the outside perimeter and so um, I want even heating. There we go. And after I get these stirred in, I'll let them go maybe another 10 minutes or so, and then I'll come back in with my little pH strips and we'll give it a test and see if all of the um, 
saponification has happened, see if it is lie neutral or if it needs to cook more because we're going for that. It's actually what we're going for now is um, just to make sure all of the soap is fully cooked. So funny. This is just so counterintuitive for a cold process soap maker. I, I'm really enjoying hot process. It's fascinating. And of course, I am super not an expert at hot process. There are some ladies on YouTube that have this down to a science. They do fabulous hot process soap. So I would encourage you just to go on YouTube and look around. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm having fun learning. So I'm still in my learning stage. Uh, and I'm so thankful that people have shared their knowledge on YouTube because that's where I'm learning. <laughs> so, all right, this looks great. I'm just going to pop the lids back on here and let these cook a little bit more. It's time to check these and see how we're doing. So again, we're going to lift the lids off. Things are cooking, looking really good. So what I'm going to do is stir these down and go ahead and do a um, pH strip test and see how we're doing. Um, that's one of the neat things about hot process that I like is adding um, the essential oils after the cook. So, you know, theoretically, more of the beneficial properties are going to be in there. So, that's again, that's just my theory. But, and again, even if you were doing a fragrant oil, um, you'd want to cool your hot process down below whatever flash point is on. Every fragrant oil will have a flash point listed on it. And um, usually they're around 200, but sometimes I've seen them as low as 145. So um, you want your soap batter to be below that. Otherwise, it's just going to dissipate off and you will have wasted your money. <laughs> and that's a bugger. Fragrant oils, essential oils, they're not cheap. So I'll leave a link. Um, I just got, oops, it's upside down. I got these on Amazon, little pH strips. It looks like a matchbook. Um, and you pull them out and it's got a guide here. I'm going to just wet my finger. I saw somebody do it like this. Wet your finger and then put that on there. And it is not cooked. It's not ready yet. So, we're going to cook this a little longer and we'll come back and retest it. All right, we're back to stir again and see if we have finally cooked this soap. So, it's been another half hour. And uh, let's just get in here and stir it down and give it a pH test and see how we're doing on the cook. So I've got a little spritz of water. I'm going to just spritz and work it in there. There we go. It is green. So, um, and I'll show you on here, if I can hold this, my little matchbook. So we are in the between the eight and nine range color, which means it's cooked. That's fabulous. It's time for the next time for the next. Step. So these are very hot. Let me get my um, thermometer over here. Yep, 194. So I am going to just put the lids on. I turn the crock pots off. I'm going to put the lids on and let them cool a little bit, and then I will go ahead and add my yogurt and my hemp oil for super fatting, and uh, we'll move move on from there. But first, I just want to let these cool a little, and I don't want them to dry out. So here's a little trick I saw um, Ellie's Every Day, which is, she is fantastic. If you haven't found her yet on YouTube, check her out. She's got great hot process videos, and I saw her do this. Um, she takes water and spritzes the top before she puts the lids back on. This is just distilled water. And it helps keep the top from getting those dry crumblies. All right. So, lids back on. We're going to start cooling down and get on with the rest of the <laughs> process here. This has taken a while. So far, this has been a total of about two hours to get up to this point. But I did have these on low, so that's part of it. But it's, you know, it's a slow process this way. All right, it's been a little bit, and uh, 
I'm still in the cooling down process. I've got my crock pots unplugged, but I figured I'd go ahead and stir in um, the yogurt and the super fat and get the colors going in here. Well, it's all cooling. All that stirring is going to help me cool down too. I wanted to show you too um, something that helps because cold process or sorry, hot process gets really glumpy and it sticks on your utensils and everything. So I keep a pitcher of hot water and I just throw the utensils I'm using in there and it keeps everything soft and pliable so I don't get those dry crusty bits stirring back in here. So it's just a tip for um, keeping your area workable. All right, I'm taking the lids off again. And so, all right, here's what we're gonna do. I will, I've got my little hemp oils here that have been cozied up so they are pretty warm. And I'm gonna pour those in each of these. So it's one ounce of unrefined organic hemp oil and I get mine from Soper's Choice and it is fabulous. So that's in there and now let me get my spatula and I have three tablespoons of, I'm using a plain, uh, obviously unsweetened Greek yogurt. You can use regular yogurt if you want. I don't think it's specific. Um, I would not use a sweetened or a, a fruit flavored one, but this is just plain yogurt. And there, I got one over here. These were just cozied up against the sides of the crock pots to kind of warm up. And then we'll get these stirred in. And I am going to put my, I've got my red reef clay. I'll show you here. I've got this is about a, two teaspoons of red reef clay in about one ounce of warm water, just to kind of help it stir in easier. So let me get these stirred in first, then I'll choose one of these for my red reef clay, and I will probably add a little titanium dioxide to the other one, uh, just to keep it nice and bright, just for fun. So these are just wonderful. And then the last thing I'm gonna stir in will be my essential oil, blend my mock um, thieves. It's just a pleasant um, blend. I love the combination. It smells really good, kind of medicinal, kind of clean. I think it smells great. Um, I So Holly at Missouri River Soaps has a wonderful hot process recipe and tutorial and she shares how she made her blend of essential oils for a thieve type blend. So if you want to um, head over to Holly's on Missouri River, she has all the specifics there. Isn't that red reef clay a gorgeous color? So beautiful. Just making sure it's all stirred in here. All right. I have my essential oil blend that I'm going to add in here that smells so great. And we'll get this in, and then we will get this in the mold. I'm excited. This is so fun to do this. I love to try new things and a hot process is still so new to me. It feels new every time I do it. I don't have, you know, the confidence of a seasoned hot process soap maker, <laughs> but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. All right, let's get this one stirred in. want to make sure everything's blended really well and we'll start layering this up in my mold here okay there's the mold and I've got my big old ladle here and I'm just gonna sort of bloop it in <laughs> nothing too uh, fancy here just getting it in the mold
Okay, it's the next day. Um, after I got this in the mold and I got the little, um, you know, puck size ones poured, I popped this in the refrigerator for several hours just to get it to cool down and then took it out. So it's been sitting out at room temperature. And here's the top. It's rustic, but I think it's very acceptable. I'm excited to get in here and see. I hope I don't have too many air pockets going on. Um, only one way to find out, and that's to get in here. These are fully saponified. I'm going to do a lather test with uh, this is just some the soap that I scraped out of the bowls after I got it all in the mold and I saved it all and put it in a little ball. So we'll do a lather test and I wanted to show you this is what I did with the extra batter. Um, I have some very pretty flowers and it was still fluid enough to come through in the molds really nice. And then I have these little pucks which I think are great. So got all those plus a big mold full with the two crock pots. So let's get in here and give this a lather test. It floats, that's interesting, kind of floats. But anyway, it just smells great. Those essential oils are wonderful. It's very bubbly. You can already, well, I don't know if you can pick it up, but it's got very big fluffy lather. Lots and lots of bubbles and it feels smooth, it smells great. So some of the properties of these essential oils is it has um, antibacterial, antiviral properties. So with everything going on, washing your hands, this I think would be a wonderful bar of soap. It's got a teeny bit of a pink hue to the bubbles from the Australian Red Reef clay, but um, I, I don't mind that at all. I think it's great. So I wanted to show you with um, a white washcloth. These are my little soap rags and they are clean. I wash them every time but they do have stains on them and I want to show you how this is going to look on a white washcloth with the red reef clay. So it is going to transfer color on there. I'm rubbing it into a lather here um, and you can see that it's going to transfer color but let me show you because it's soap. Well, that's a piece of soap on there, but it comes right out. So, um, you know, with charcoal soaps and dark clay soaps, you can see I probably wouldn't use a white washcloth, but if you did, it's going to come out of there. So you don't have to worry about your laundry or things like that with color transfer. Um, but the iron oxide in this is very high and iron stains, so that is uh, makes it great for your skin, but just a word of caution when you're using white washcloths. All right, let's get into these and see. I'm hoping I don't have air pockets because it was pretty thick, but still fluid and workable. And look at that. I am pretty tickled. That's just gorgeous. So, and the tops are a little rustic, but each individual bar, I think that's pretty. So I've got no issues there. I'm loving it. Look at that. I mean, little wispy swirls. I am just tickled. Super pleased with these. And I will let these go through a full six week uh, cure because of all the liquid that I added in there and let them um, you know, just evaporate all the extra so it'll be nice and hard and long lasting. All right, can we just take a minute and talk about the swirls and hot process? Good heavens, those are beautiful. I'm so tickled with this. So 
So I would really encourage anybody who is familiar with soap making and has never tried hot process to give it a give it a swirl. No pun intended. <laughs> give it a whirl. Um, this was fun. It was easy, and uh, I think it's gorgeous. I am loving these.